Hey guys, what's up? Hope you're well. Uh, February, start of a new month. Well, it's a few days in anyway. So let's uh, see what's happening uh, in the charts. So here's Bitcoin. Previous all-time highs. Rejected. Dip below. Liquidity grab straight up. Now, uh, we've paused here. This is the weekly. Uh, I just noticed something before. Is that just before I started? I've actually got um hidden bear div so this price swing here is higher than this one so this is high this is low rsi is low this is high so that is a uh inverse uh bear uh bearish divergence not not inverse sorry hidden bearish divergence um on the daily uh the bearish divergence exists as well so this price block here is higher than this one this rsi is lower than this swing here so bearish divergence there on the four hour you've also got local regular bearish divergence so the rsi which is the green line on this one so that's going price is going up rsi is going down uh you know from a you know market structures point of view i guess that makes a makes a ton of sense to me i mean because we had the bottom at 16 we had this massive run up very very sharp bulls are exhausted bears haven't actually really done that much though so that's a good thing um so what we could be seeing is what you know i've spoken about previously and other people have too and that is it could be uh an inverse head and shoulders reversal maybe uh, we'll see what happens this week so you know up, if price does make it all the way back down to here and then shoot off like that um that's fine that's a healthy like if this pulls back to here you'll probably start hearing people um you know on socials saying oh my god we're going to go back down to 12. until we start breaking past 16 then no so it gets down to here that's a, making an inverted head and shoulders in my opinion um something interesting to note here is just the convergence of the uh, emas so things are things are starting to um that's gone actually gone below so i thought it was uh, this hasn't actually crossed yet let's have a look has it actually crossed Jeez, i'll tell you what's bang on um looking at the values the purple is 24.917 and the darker color is 24.919. So technically it's crossed below. Um, but this candle here is live, so it's not locked in yet. Um, yeah, interesting times there. I still think, um, I still think the bottom is in from a macro perspective. I just don't think that we're ready to launch. I don't think this. I don't think we're in a bull market yet. I think we're in the disbelief stage, where we could just sort of crab our way up and down, up and down across here until uh, we get closer to the halving, right? Um, on a lower time frame. Here are the two levels that we were talking about before on the high time frame. So that's the, these pink lines. Um, the EMAs are catching up. So like we're below the 50. This isn't great. I don't like this at all. Uh, where's, let's do this. So in the terms of trend lines and stuff, you could draw one here. You could also draw one like that. And prices below both of them, it's going to start to get real dicey if it breaks here and then what i would be doing is shorting from here down to here or even this order block here but the high time frame stuff is definitely saying exhaustion um the rsi has dipped below um the overbought so, which is good, which is a good thing, meaning that, um, you know, bulls, bulls are losing steam, right? So up here in the overbought section, people start to say, oh my God, 
uh, it's overbought, therefore you got to sell. That's not really how it works. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this many times before. When RSI relative strength index is way up there above 70 and in the 80s, it's telling you that the bulls are in control and bears getting slaughtered. So why the hell would you sell, right? You want to wait until the RSI starts getting weaker and you wait for it to tell you that the bulls are getting stronger. So if it got to here, you'd be going, oh my God, overbought, got to sell, but price was still here, right? It just stayed up in that overbought range for a long time and price kept going up and up and up and up. Now that it's fallen below and we're back into the 60s and below 70s, bears are getting stronger, bulls are getting weaker. We're seeing weak price here starting to, you know, it's been going down, what's this, the daily? It's been going down basically all week or sideways, which is to me, you know, a sideways price action, you should be seeing RSI closer towards 50, which is what we're getting now, right? So where the bulls and the bears are evenly, you know, fighting it out. Um, yeah, so interesting. You want to see, you want to see a rejection on here on the tops of these highs, maybe a rejection on the EMAs. Um, if you get a rejection to the underside, you want to short down, back down to price in this order block. Um, <coughs> similar story on ETH. Price is going up, RSI is going down. That's bearish divergence. You've got um, you've got low tests, but they're in they're at the top of a run, so that is a that is a bearish signal. They're tweezers as well, so meaning that it's tried twice to do anything, do something, and couldn't. Um, bears couldn't push it up. Um, bulls couldn't push it up. Bears couldn't push it down. Um, the oscillator here is way is way overbought. This oscillator here tells you where there's usually swings in the market. So here, down the bottom, is here and here. But the RSI itself is still quite in the middle, right? So um, bulls and bears with Ethereum overall, it's pretty even, Steven. So it's like it's trying to wait for something. Probably the unlock, if I had to guess. Um, if we look at the ETH Bitcoin chart for the last three weeks, ETH has been losing versus Bitcoin. It's going down. We've now stopped here. Um, a bit of a recovery. Yeah, it hasn't broken down to here. I don't expect it to go too far below this trend line, though. So this is a trend line that's been running now since November 2019. Um, I'm thinking that it probably go sideways and then hopefully break out here because if it breaks down from here then it's game over so it'll be interesting to see what's happening with um you know the unlock and uh, the shanghai update um what else is going on people have been talking about <coughs> excuse me people have been talking about dog tokens lately so uh dodge has had a bit of a good run let's have a look at that just seems to be growing, grinding higher and higher. Uh, you know, RSI is high-ish. So the strength is there, but as you can see, it's, it's just grinding up. So it's not like it's taking off. Dodge is still quite correlated with the rest because of its high market cap. Um, there's been some noise about SHIB lately too, because I think from memory, they're launching their own chain. So, uh, you know, the volume on SHIB has been quite high. This is the Binance chart. So these volumes come from Binance. So, I mean, SHIB is not something that I would buy and invest in, but definitely we all know that meme coins, once they get a run, they tend to pump pretty hard. Um, on, the week, on the weekly, SHIB has come off a good level, um, pretty much like an all-time low level. So, you know, buying here wouldn't have been a dumb idea. Um, we have broken, we've broken this, 
this little area though. So, I mean, and a lot of other coins are similar. Um, let's go to Bonk, which is a Solana dog themed meme token. Similar sort of thing, you know, a longer term downward uh, trend line here and it breaks with pretty decent volume. This is from Huobi, but there's a ton of trading on this on the various Solana DEXs. So, you know, don't um, treat Huobi as gospel on this one. But, um, you know, the, the charts are pretty messy um, on TradingView if you're trying to access Solana DEXs. You need to use something like, um, you know, another dedicated website. So like BirdEye is pretty good um, for Solana stuff. Might move that down slightly so it makes more sense. See, this to me now, actually, put it back where it was. So, this to me now kind of starts, you're starting to look like uh, it could be a head and shoulders. Yeah, so it's a wait and see on that one. Let's go back to the daily. What's Matic doing? Of that weekly, surprise actually didn't make it up to here, Baron Dollar 40. But you know, there you go, it still might, but it stopped where it stopped last time, so which is the dollar 25 from here. So it's been in this range now for a while, July 2022. Um, yeah, sideways price action. It's, it kind of reminds me of sushi, actually. This whole range at the bottom, except this accumulation range has been much longer. Um, this is the weekly. So if this breaks out of here, I'd expect it would get to about three bucks. Um, the you know if you read the sushi forums, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going to get released. Um. Yeah, they talk in the, in the Discord and that. They talk about what they're doing. Um, you know, they've got the new tokenomics coming out. So if that goes well, uh, you know, the first, well, the official draft and all the calculators that they made have been released to the public so people can play around with their simulator and figure out whether the tokenomics that they've suggested are actually good or not. Um, that still needs to go to a vote. Um, the runway for Sushi is better than what it was so it's now six years according to the ceo <clears throat> um yeah and they've got a bunch of other things coming up uh you know dev work and things like that so um one to watch uh yeah there seems to be renewed interest in DeFi stuff lately not just um, sushi, but you know other protocols as well. Um, Alluvium was something else I talked about in my Facebook group. Uh, here is the Binance chart. This is the weekly. It's had the highest weekly volume that it's ever had on Binance. It's had, this is five weeks of straight up. I'll go to the log chart. So it makes a bit more, so you can see one, two, three, four, five. We're now in the sixth week. Um, massive amounts of volume. So there could be something here, buying here now. I mean, RSI is only at 50, so it could still keep going up to here. I really don't know the tokenomics of it that well, though. But it, it does look good, um, just from a pure TA perspective. So... Get amongst the social discussion on, Alluvi uh, on Alluvium just to see what the devs are doing and, you know, is there some sort of staking thing where you have to buy a whole bunch of tokens and then stake it to get some sort of reward? That's usually uh, a classic way that projects get people to buy their token. Um, right. I think that's all from me. Uh, have a great week, guys. I'll talk to you soon.